Marco and Jeets, X1075. Uh, Ransom, I lost the uh, official boob tube music. Uh, I have to apologize to you for that. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I deserve every bit of it. How dare you. I apologize. <laughs> but it doesn't uh, take away from the fact that you, Ransom, are in the boob tube studio. Oh, wait, look what I found. Look what I found. There it is. It's Marco and Jeets on X1075. Here's your boob tube. He is the connoisseur of boob tubes. He's uh, also known as Ransom. And he's in the boob tube studio. How about this, guys? Third Eye Blind, they haven't been relevant for a long time, but they're relevant today because they played a show at the RNC. And uh, here's what happened, okay? It's a Republican National Convention. It is the Republican National Convention. They played a charity event in Cleveland on, uh, what was it, Tuesday? A room filled with Republicans. So here's what the band did. They're, they're, they're not Republicans. They they trolled the, the fans the entire show. Didn't play one hit. The singer even kept talking about gay rights and science the entire time in between uh, songs. Uh, Stephen Jenkins, uh, the uh, lead singer, was asking the crowd, does anybody here believe in science? And this also <laughs> happened right here. Like my cousins who are gay into the American fabric. <laughs> to let this song is to take into your heart the message and to actually, actually have a feeling to arrive and move forward and not live your life in fear and imposing that fear on other people. You can boo all you want, but I'm the artist up here. Now, is, is he gay? How does he walk around with balls that big? Uh, no, he's not gay, but they did play uh, a, a song called Non-Dairy Creamer, which is about two gay guys getting <laughs> married. Um, <laughs> that could go so many different ways. It's hilarious. Yeah, he, uh, he, has, he has friends, and of course he has family, which he mentioned in that little bit of audio that are gay. So uh, he used this opportunity to, uh, to troll everybody. I think oh. it's kind of funny. Actually, right. that's just me. So when he said, do you believe in science? He wasn't like, yeah, he brought up global warming. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was just doing a bunch of stuff to troll everybody. It was great. It was awesome. But he wasn't like science is for idiots. He, he was being more tongue in cheek about it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got he was being pretty smart about it. Uh, a lot of celebrities have accumulated, uh, accumulated. I can't even say the word, uh, huge audiences on social media. So companies are willing to pay big bucks to have them plug products in their post. Uh, especially stars with the most followers. According to research by DeMarie Analytics, Selena Gomez is the biggest catch right now, and her going rate per post is uh, $550,000 per post across mm. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Selena actually got paid this the other day because she did a, uh, a post for Coca-Cola. Selena also has a total of 108.8 million followers on all three of those. That's 300000 more than her posts were worth about a year ago. And uh, let's not forget, uh, you know, she also did uh, the product placement I just mentioned a little while for, uh, for Coke. Uh, and that became the most liked photo on Instagram. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was reading the other day. Um, that influencers, digital influencers, are becoming like the big thing now. And so this is anybody with a good following mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Twitter, YouTube. There's a guy on YouTube. I don't. I forget his name. But PewDiePie? I don't know his name. I forget. But he um, he puts things in a blender, and he blends things up. This guy's got like 5 million followers, and that's his act. He's like, wonder what this will be like, and he just blends it up. And that's it? Yeah, but Does he's, he taste it? Yeah, the name of the channel is uh, mil- called Will It Blend. That's what it's called? Yeah, it's called Will It Blend. He's got like one of those like industrial strength blenders. Yeah. And he'll just throw crap in it. it, it the most, some of it's not even like food stuff. It's just all kinds of stuff. None of it is food stuff yeah, from what I've seen. I've seen sandwiches, but yeah, I've seen all kinds of stuff. And then what he does is he just talks about it and he'll kind of add, you know, he'll start riffing a little bit and just kind of right. whatever. But he's getting paid thousands of dollars to run ads on these channels while he does it. And now he's doing uh, comedy shows, like comedy venues. Mm -hmm. He'll go to a comedy club, set up his blenders, and he's selling out within like 30 seconds. This guy's remarkable. The last time that uh, that the uh, new iPhone came out, he did like a five-second review of it. I remember. He's just like, yeah, this phone's pretty good. And then he threw it in the blender and hit the button. Yeah. And that's his act. He just, you know, he'll do a little talk about whatever, and then he'll blend stuff up. And that's all he does. And he's... He's absolutely killing it as an influencer. Killing it. No, he's probably making, you know, half no, a million dollars. He's making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and some, like the biggest channel on YouTube right now is a guy named PewDiePie. That's who I thought you were talking about. All he does is plays video games and yells at the TV while he <laughs> plays video games. He has his, his channel monetized on YouTube. He is the highest paid. He, he made like $14 million last year yeah. just on his YouTube channel alone. That doesn't include his Twitch channel, any of that other stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. People watch other people play video games. Yeah. 
Well, you know. Like, isn't the fun playing the video game? Yeah, but then I could turn that around and say people watch other people have sex. Isn't the fun doing it? Yeah, that's true. People watch other people play football. I don't get the same feeling when I watch people play video games, though. <laughs> well, maybe some people do. That's the thing, <laughs> right? That's the thing. Yeah, Pokemon Go is actually the number one game on Twitch right now. So people have figured out a way to stream your game live. Like, you could actually see people's faces, and uh, they'll watch people play Pokemon Go. Yeah. For hours and hours. Uh, going back to the story, though, Kendall Jenner is currently the second So we're all most- depressed right now, right? Because, <laughs> because I know I am. I've, one of his clowns making $14 million yelling at his television. Yeah. You know, we're getting him at 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and nothing's working. You know what we need? A I mean, blender. Yeah. Actually, my house, rip him off. Forget it. Let's just get a blender. And we can just claim we did it first. Yeah. Hell with the guy. Yeah. Kendall Jenner is currently the uh, second most influential person on social media, and uh, it's followed by Rihanna, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus rams out the uh, Wait, top five. Cyrus? Out. What the hell has she done lately? Miley Cyrus Wait a minute, is still so up there. The, the young Jenner is the, the, the king or queen of the, of, of the Kardashians? Right now, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. Who, she, who is she uh, with romantically? Do we know? She's kind of going through a phase. She's passing people around, isn't she? Well, I do know that uh, Scott Disick claims that he banged them all. That's right. So maybe she's with him. Yeah, I'm only interested in these chicks, like I said, if, if they're fighting and who they're sleeping with. Good Aside from that, I can care less. Good for him. Uh, Stephen Colbert hasn't exactly lit the world on fire since replacing David Letterman. At the same time, James Corden is uh, getting a lot of love for his carpool karaoke bit, amongst other things. Uh-oh, there's I feel some, like something's coming. There's been some talk about CBS possibly swapping the shows and giving Corden the earlier time slot. The network <laughs> says that's oh, not man. happening, although an exec did admit that Stephen's performance has been, quote, uneven and quote uh the new uh interview uh steven actually admitted that it hurts his feelings to hear rumors like that he said quote i'm a human being i (laughs) care the implication that the uh question is that the show isn't good enough in its present position hurts my feelings uh so of course that makes you feel bad but it doesn't jibe with what i know about our show so you'll recover yeah you shouldn't say it hurts your feelings that's that's like that's uh... that's like crying at work you don't do it yeah, you don't you don't cry at work. That's bad. You should just say, "Hey, I take full responsibility," and uh, the hell with it. If it's not working, it's not working. Doing the best I can. Maybe I his uh, guests can start giving him a hug before the interviews. Yeah, instead of dancing like Ellen, they could just group hug before. Yeah. The Gordon would be. I tell you though, he'd be an upgrade. He'd be an upgrade. I think without question. Oh, but, just with all the stuff he's got going viral yeah, right now just, and stuff. Yeah. Just, a lot of buzz around him. Well, and I feel like the celebrities really like Gordon. Like I feel like they like being on his show. Like, yeah. they don't look at it as being interviewed, you know, I, or, or like you're, I'm just here to, like, plastically promote something. I feel like they kind of like hanging out with Corden. And that's a credit to Corden. You know, he sure. sets that environment. Good for him. You know, if Colbert keeps doing the things that he's been doing this week, though, if he brings back the Colbert character. It won't work. I, I think it will, no. man. Like, we, this is the first time we've actually been talking about Colbert ever on this show. And it's probably the first time the other shows around the, the Valley and around the country have been talking it's about too, him, too. It's too niche. It's too niche. I promise you. What he ought to do, and we all agree on this, he should have the blender guy on. Yeah. And he should, <laughs> they should blend John Stewart yep. up and uh, go from there and see what happens. Thursday TV reminders, comedians in car getting coffee, 1130 on Crackle. Uh, John Oliver is Jerry's next guest. We also have the 11th season finale of Bones tonight. God. That is uh, 8 p.m. on Fox. And 11 the, seasons? 11 seasons. Yeah, wow. that is correct. Bones. And then live from Comic-Con, 8 p.m. on Sci-Fi, Will Arnett is going to be hosting a nightly recap of the events at Comic-Con, which starts tonight and runs through Sunday. And, of course, uh, finally, the Republican National Convention continues on CBS NBC and ABC. That is it, guys. I'll tell you, Comic Con, they've done a great job with that. I mean, I was reading something on the line the other day, yesterday, and all the stuff they have going on at Comic Con, that's a cool ass event now. Really cool oh, event. Yeah. I mean, when it first started, it was kind of, I don't know, it was a little too inside, but they've mainstreamed that thing out, man. There is something for everybody. I was looking looking at all like the little stands they have set up, and it is that that is like kick ass. There's a lot of there's a lot of people taking vacation and traveling from New York and Miami, I was reading. Yeah, the problem when it first started is that it was just comic books. Right. And now they got movies, they got TV shows. Well, they have a, they've lot got... they have a lot of tech now. They a lot of tech, a lot of technology. Yeah. But uh, even they got like video three, games. four or five years ago, it was just a booth and it was comic yeah. books or T-shirts or whatever. And it was just a bunch of people peddling their own stuff. Yeah, but like now. A big garage sale. Basically. Right, right. It was. It was like a huge yard sale. But now I was looking at some of the stuff there. I mean, they get these like walking robots and stuff. It's awesome. I wish I could go. 
Yeah, I used to cover E3 every year. This is the first year that I didn't cover it because, you know, I had a baby. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the other big event that I've always wanted to do is, is, is Comic-Con. Yeah, San Diego, right? It's, it's going to happen. It'll happen. They're we, all over now. We, we get one here in Las Vegas, but it's just not as big. But this is the San Diego one. This San Diego Comic-Con. This is Comic -Con. the big one. Yeah, San Diego's the biggest one, and then New York Comic-Con is the second biggest one. Yeah, it looks like a cool event. All right, thank you, uh, Ransom. Appreciate that. That's the Boob Tube. It's Marco and Jeets X1075.